Okay, I can't quite believe it, but I think this is our last lesson um, ever on this topic and this whole of Math A level. I think we'll have finished the, finished the sequences in the series by now. Anyway, this is a really, really short video. It's just knowing a different technique that you can use partial fractions. So partial fractions allow us to split a fraction up into ones that we can then find the binomial expansion of. So this is a good bit of revision and recapping on partial fractions. So first of all, they want us to express this thing in partial fractions. So we have 4 minus 5x over 1 plus x, 2 minus x. Now we know that that can be expressed as a over 1 plus x plus b over 2 minus x. Now if I multiply up, um, I get that 4 minus 5x is equal to a brackets 2 minus x plus b brackets 1 plus x. I'm going to do some substitution today. I'm going to say if x is equal to 2, we get 4 minus 10, which is minus 6. And that bit disappears, and that's 3b. So you get that b is equal to minus 2. If I substitute in that x is equal to minus 1, I get 4 plus 5, which is 9, and then I get 2 minus minus 1, which is 3a, and that bit disappears, so you get that a is equal to 3. Hence, 4 minus 5x over 1 plus x, 2 minus x, is equal to 3 over 1 plus x minus 2 over 2 minus x. Part A of the question done. Hence, show that the cubic approximation of this is this plus this plus this plus this. And then we're going to state the range of values for which the expansion is valid. Okay, so if we're going to try and do the expansion of this thing, we can't do that. We have to do the expansion using the partial fractions. So I'm going to do these two things separately. First of all, I have got 3, 1 plus x to the minus 1. And it's already got a 1 there, so I can go straight in with this. This is a super easy one. So my n is minus 1, and my x is actually just x here, okay? So that's going to be 3 multiplied by 1 plus n x plus n, n minus 1, over 2 factorial x squared plus n, n minus 1, n minus 2, over 3 factorial x, oh, I shouldn't put the squared inside there, should I? x squared, x cubed. So that is 3, 1 minus x, it's positive, they will cancel, plus x squared. It's negative, they will cancel, minus x cubed. Multiplying by the 3, and you get 3 minus 3x plus 3x squared minus 3x cubed. I'm stopping at x cubed this time because I'm just adding these two expressions together afterwards or subtracting them depending on how you want to see it, okay? I am probably going to do just this bit here and then I'll subtract them after, okay? So if I'm now going to try and do this chunk, I have got 2 over 2 minus x to the minus 1. So I need to pull out this 2. So I'm going to leave the first 2 that's there. And when I pull out the next 2, it's going to be to the power of minus 1. And then you've got your 1 minus x over 2 to the power of minus 1. So that's 2 times a half, which is just 1. So it's just 1 minus x over 2 to the minus 1. Now we can go straight in with doing some expansion here. This time my n is minus 1 and my x is minus x over 2. So I have got, uh, what have I got? 1 plus n x plus n, n minus 1 over 2 factorial x squared plus n, n minus 1, n minus 2 over 3 factorial minus x over 2 all cubed. So that's going to be 1, then a plus here, plus x over 2. 
Uh, this is going to be a positive overall, and two and the two are going to cancel, so it's actually just going to be plus x squared over 4, because actually all this bit here cancels, so you just square this thing. These bits all cancel as well, so you're just going to be ending up with this thing that you've got here, but let's just decide if it's positive or negative first of all. So it's negative, positive, negative, so this is a negative, this is also a negative, so it is going to be a positive. All of this cancels because 3 times 2 times 1 is the same as 3 times 2 times 1. So it's just going to be x cubed over 2 cubed, which is 8. Now, we know that to find out what this expansion is going to be, it is going to be this one, take away this one. So let's actually just go together and actually do the question. So it is 4 minus 5x. Four minus five x. Sorry about that. Over one plus x two minus x is approximately equal to this first one minus this second one. So this one minus this one. So it is three minus three x plus three x squared minus three x cubed minus all of this. So they're all going to be negatives. Minus one minus x over two minus x squared over 4, minus x cubed over 8. Obviously, I could have bracketed it when I subtracted it, because if there were any negatives, they would have become positives as well. So let's just do the subtraction. So 3 minus 1 is 2. And then I've got minus 3 minus a half, so that's minus 7 over 2, x. And then I've got 3x squared minus a quarter x squared. So lazy today. Plus 11 over 4x squared. And then I've got minus 3x cubed minus 1 over 8x cubed, which is minus 25 over 8x cubed. Let's just see if we've got it right. Great, 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 great. Positive, negative, positive, negative. Let's just double check that. Positive, negative, positive, negative. Great, so that's correct. Then it just says state the range of values for which the expansion is valid. So I want a new colour. Ooh, okay. So we did two expansions. This one was just valid when we did the expansion for... Ugh. This one here was valid for x being less than 1, because there was nothing interesting going on there. This one, we did the expansion for minus x over 2 being less than 1. So actually, it's just for x being less than 2. Now, which of these ones is more dominant? If you think about a number line, and often a number line is a good way to think about this, the first one says that it has got to be between 1 and minus 1. The second one says that it's got to be between 2 and minus 2. But the only place where they're both true is when it's between 1 and minus 1. So the marks you would get for this are for finding out the validity of this and this. So for part C, valid for x being less than 1 for that particular one that we did here, just because of the way that the expansions worked. Okay, So the range of values which the expansion is valid valid for x being less than 1. So that's all that's new there. I am just going to do one exam question, and then that is us finished. Okay? So let's do some partial fractions, and then we'll do this up to x squared, and then you can do exercise 4c. If you want, you can even have a go at this question straight away. Part a, we've got some partial fractions. So I've got 2x squared ooh, plus 5x minus 10 all over x minus 1, x plus 2, equals a plus b over x minus 1, plus c over x plus 2. Okay, so I'm going to say I've got, I'm going to do this technique, 2x squared plus 5x minus 10 is equal to a, x minus 1, x plus 2, plus b, x plus 2, plus c, x minus 1. I'm going to... I'm going to compare coefficients. Why not? I haven't done that for a while. 
So if I compare the x squareds, I would get that 2 is equal to a, because that's the coefficient of x squared. If I compare the x values, I get that 5 is equal to, well, the x values I would have here, I would have 2x minus x, so that would just be 1x, so there would just be an a, lots of x, and then I would have b, lots of x, and c, lots of x. Remember, a is 2, so I subtract 2, I get 3 equals b plus c, and if I compare the constants, then I would have minus 10 equals minus 2a plus 2b minus c. This is not necessarily the most efficient, I just felt like doing something different. So we get minus 10 equals minus 4 plus 2b minus c. So that's minus 6 equals 2b minus c. If I take these two equations and I add them together, so I'm going to take this one as number 1 and this one as number 2. If I add them, bearing in mind you could do this whichever technique you want to do. You don't have to do my technique. I'm just doing something different here. I'm just doing the way I perhaps might have done this. So if I add them together, I get minus 3 equals 3b. because the c's cancel, so b is equal to minus 1, which means from equation 1, we get 3 equals minus 1 plus c, so c equals 4. So c equals 4, b equals minus 1, and a equals 2. I'm going to be really cheeky and just check that I've got that right, so it's 2 minus 1, 4, 2 minus 1, 4, great. Hence or otherwise, expand this, it doesn't even say binomial expansion, it just says expand it and give it as far as x squared in simplified form. So we have now got, for part a, we know that it is 2 minus 1 over x minus 1 plus 4 over x plus 2. So that is 2 minus x minus 1 to the minus 1 plus 4 uh, x plus 2 to the minus 1. Now, do you notice anything about these? They don't look the right kind of way round. So maybe actually there was something we would like to have done to this one, first of all. I think I'm actually going to do that just to make it a bit easier because we normally like to have it as a 1 plus x, but this one we've got an x minus 1. So if I multiply the top and bottom by minus 1, this would actually change. Uh, let's change this around. We want them to look the right kind of way. Come on, don't give up on me on this last video. Maybe the pen works. No. I can't believe this is happening in the last video. Okay, I think this is not going to work. What am I going to do? Let's see if any of the tools work. I'm going to start going crazy. I'm starting to go crazy. I'm talking to myself. I've lost the plot. Okay, I'm just going to actually show you from the mark scheme, seeing as that's the only thing that's allowed to be done. Definitely. Oh, the writing's back. Okay. Sorry about that. Where did we get to? Okay, we said that if I multiply the top and bottom by minus 1 here, you'd get minus 1 times minus 1, so you just get a plus 1 over... I think this computer's given up, if I'm honest with you. Yep, I'm just going to show the mark scheme instead. I'm very sorry, guys. So, do you see how it changed to a plus 1 minus x to the minus 1? So, if you multiply these by minus 1, you'd get 1 over minus x plus 1, 1 over 1 minus x. So that's why they've changed it here to a 1 over 1 minus x. And for this bit, they also had to factor out, uh, they had to factor out a 2 to the minus 1 to have a 1 in there, and 2 to the minus 1 is a half, and a half times 4 
is 2. So you end up with this expression here. You do the binomial expansions for them separately. You then combine them all together. So you have the constants, the x terms and the x squared terms. And you end up with 5 plus 3 over 2 x squared because the x completely disappears. I cannot believe I haven't been able to finish the last question of this whole thing. I'm, I'm very mad at this. But I'm going to have to stop. Okay, guys, um, well done for completing this and going through all of the videos. I'm very, very proud of all of you for doing all of this, and I will hopefully be speaking to you soon. Okay, bye.